So that's my bad. I didn't I didn't do a test run and I normally do a test run. Uh, I, I just love where it depths like you know, very very before this, very Midwest coily is like, uh, you know, I whipped up a nice little, you know, info for it. So I'm like, oh, that sounds that sounds nice and hit play and it's like Oh, it's the top left of the whole video. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just laughing. Because I've been there before with audio, with video, with shit cutting out, with the wrong window being recorded, the wrong audio channel. I've done that. So I just laugh at it. Yeah, no, that was that was my bad. I will I will uh, uh, take full responsibility for that. Now presenting the left-hand side of Star Wars. If you wish to see the full <laughs> film, watch again the right-hand side of Star Wars airing tomorrow. <laughs> that well, would be hey. an interesting way to see a movie, wouldn't it? I mean, you know, I used to do that. You'd, you'd have the people that would sneak a camcorder into, like, a film and then oh, put it yeah. on very early oh, YouTube. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah, lawless yeah. days. That. The Lawless Wild West, you'd see, like, on early websites, people uploading all of the bootleg recorded shit. Yes. It'd be the far left-hand corner with somebody's <laughs> face. I remember I wanted to see if a new Aliens movie, for the first time in years and years and years, was worth a shit when Prometheus was talked about. And so I said, okay, I'll just go watch the first ten minutes of the bootleg, and if it draws me in, I'll go watch the movie. And so I watched the first 10 minutes of the bootleg, and I saw it where three quarters of the movie was obscured by this man's enormous face. <laughs> <laughs> like it was shot from inside of a pocket or a buttonhole camera. <laughs> and so I was like, yeah, I'll go see it. That looks interesting enough. But I imagine that there is a master cut in someone's mind of this movie where they've seen that original recording and they're like, where's the face? I wish to see the face version. Oh, Night Owl, that is uh, very generous. Again. Wow. 136 subs. That's a lot of sandwiches. That's, do we that's have that lot. many people in the in the channel? We do not. <laughs> we we do not. We're probably yeah, it's losing very the much things. All right, let's get into the game. Let, then. Let's play a Metal Gear and a Solid in that order. Huh? I do believe that I was almost completely out of ammo on everything. It's weird. It's almost like oh, you got in a gunfight. Yeah. Here's where... Oh, yeah. There we go. All right. Yeah. Now, oh, look. Here he's coming over. He's coming over. And you have to have the right gun selected. Yeah. Otherwise, he's like, you're a spy. Because that's, what, that's what gives you away is the gun. Yes. Well, you don't have the suppressor and the light on the suppressor. It's a laser, not a light. Oh, my bad. Right. You want that? Sure. Yeah. This gear sure is solid metal. Oh, man. Colonel Ames? Gru! Gru! He did, he Gru. did say DIA, not DIA. <laughs> the men in the Kia have tried to kill me for years. <laughs> Tell your men in the Nissa to stop spying on me. <laughs> Tell the Nero to stop looking where I hide. The Kagaba is a dangerous organization. <laughs> like, who is this guy? You. Which team are you with? Alpha. Show me your face. Ah, hold on. Uh, Vulmada. God, that sounds like a restaurant. Like, welcome to Volmada. Um, so Volmada says, I made it to a live stream that has both deputy and tax. This makes me incredibly happy. My day has been saved. And then they show like a mask that is somebody that has like dead, dead eyes. And that's an emoticon. I don't yeah, know what I it Yeah, I think means. that's the emoticons. Yeah. Okay, right. It's one of them emojis. And so then it's a thank you, Deputy and Tex, for bringing lots of smiles and laughs. Well, thank you for No problem, that. man. Happy to be here. I am alive. God. I, I haven't touched a game since I switched to the AK. 
Why would you want to touch a game? Why would you want to play a game, Dev? Why would you want that? Why would you want to play a game that you had you had purchased to play? Yeah. I love how he's like swinging on purpose to block bullets. Yes. Oh, we're on red alert. Did you know that? Red alert, red alert. It's a catastrophe. How many? <laughs> danger, danger. I vote danger. Um, I guess in this, we could always ask the question, what would Crobon do? Yeah, that's right. This is less a let's play and more an MSTK movie riff. <laughs> You know what would be really funny is just if they had the realistic radio distortion from this sort of stuff. You yeah. Know, like using VHF at short range with all sorts of stuff. So <clears throat> the colonel comes in and he's like, <laughs> as you walk around, as you're trying to listen, he's like, all right, here's what you do. If you would please coming into the left road, and you'd be like, "What the fuck is going on?" And he'd be like, "Good luck, please." <laughs> Good luck, and then he just hangs up, like he's doing a mic drop. <laughs> it's... If if you are not in the correct places when you call him, you don't actually get objectives; you get question marks. <laughs> Oh man. Ugh. Colonel, I'm afraid. Oh, they didn't even put me in alert mode. I'm just in caution mode. What is caution mode? Like, like, what? It, it's is there? I don't know that there's. Okay, red alert. I get yellow alert. Sure, but like, caution mode. <laughs> oh no! It's that the like shell, a bad band. shell B1 core strangler. <laughs> ah, the Strangler is back. Just another day on Space Station 13. Oh no, he has strangled yet another soldier. Oh, that's not good. That's that's a bit of crick crack. Oh, he dead. Alright, so here's what we do. Is you just Yeah. Yep, yeah, you gotta shoot you gotta shoot there. Oh, here, here comes the guy. He's coming to investigate. Except my timing's gonna no, be off. No, no, no! Why am I stuck to the wall? What's going on? You don't. You live there now. Don't worry about I it. I do. He can't see you. He can see you. He he absolutely can see me. All right, run away! Well, yeah. I mean, if if you can do the magical backflip kick thing to stop them all, that's that's one thing. Uh, but you're cartwheeling through people is is just another level altogether. I I just can't believe that this guy feels that he's accomplishing anything by sneaking in here to talk to somebody. Like, how do you get intel out of an area? It, it's it's and again the knee capping. It's <laughs> oh god, the knee capping is There's something more else. Yeah. Would you mind streaming live in here so I could get a uh, more live view of what's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me one second. Be... I think I'm about that... to die. Oh, that would be an excellent segue into doing that. Thank yes. You. All right, well, we'll just let this happen. It's time. Oh, man. All right, now I can watch it live without delay. And I can watch. I don't know what was going on with my controller there. Oh, don't this worry. Is... Happens. No, it happens with a controller. Uh, it's it's most controllers have a shelf life, and then they get really dirty, and then they don't work. So Boy, here's like what we're gonna do. Uh, we're we're gonna have to we're gonna have to get in there, and we're gonna have to kill the bad guys, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> Well, actually, I, I don't have to kill anyone here. But well, all right, but let's talk about what we're going to do. I not, would not, not I would not to. be the Shell B1 Core Strangler if I didn't. 
Can you imagine if you were just in the next room and you heard that? Like you're <laughs> just in the next room over and you hear <laughs> crunch, fall down. And you're like, I need to lock the door. Like that's what I would hear. Yeah, like yeah, the guy I, on the I, other I, side yeah. of that, on the other side of that shelf, he should have heard that. Yeah, I mean, if there was a, a <laughs> the night owl says, in strangulate. <laughs> There was like a wizard spell that choked you to death. That's what it sounded like. Are you going to hurt, hurt this poor man? No. What did he do? Oh, well, they found all the bodies. <laughs> the, oh, wow. The, sh the, the strangler's back. Dun, 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 the strangler's back. Dun, dun, dun. He is a strangler. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, oh, oh, God. Why did you wake up? Sent him to the deep sleep. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> oh, he's he's faster on the draw than I am. Even though Vamp says I'm the fastest human he's ever known. The fastest human? The yeah, that's, fastest human. That's why he's... He yeah. I know, but I'm just thinking about, like, maybe how many people has he seen? Like, has he been living on a military base where he sees faster than average people? But he's never seen, like, an Olympian, right? All right, so... Oh, 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 a little bit of shot there. A little bit of shot there. Give him a little bit of business. Oh, How are they coming from behind me? They came from behind all right, so everybody I'm thinking, back there was super dead, right? Uh, well, yeah, I I just think that the way forward right, in this yeah. case, <laughs> I've been carotene. <laughs> oh, that Oof. man died in a fucking hotel closet. That's rough. Yeah, well, like <laughs> I could make a horrible joke. I I could make a horrible joke. Well, yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, something about hard times and tightening of the belt. Anyways, um, wow. Uh, come on, let me let me press the button. Press the button I, I'm just gonna. I'm just. I'm just gonna say this. Like, I I don't get I don't get Caradine. I, I don't get his mystique. Like, he was great. He was really fantastic in Kung Fu. Like, for what it was. It was, it was like, B-movie yeah. niceness, right? And, uh... It's, it's one of those things where you, you have this show that really shouldn't have survived. Because it was a little weird... And then he just kind of did a lot of weird other roles. And then he came back big in Kill Bill. And, and like, it made him kind of relevant again. And I wonder, like, what else he might have been in had he lived, to be honest. Yeah. Those guys are really well equipped. I'm going to run. Well, it's almost like someone has been going around uh, choking people the fuck out and breaking their necks. Like, <laughs> like it's a sport. <laughs> and, and, and so now they're mad. They're very mad, and they've prepared. They said, you go nowhere without a shotgun and eight things. So what you need to do is eat 40 cans of beans and run away with a box. Uh. Uh-oh. I think you're trapped. I think I am as well. I can't well, what believe they don't know is kicked. they're trapped in here with me. Well, you could throw a grenade over that. But yeah, that's true. I, I just think it's funny that that guy kicked the shit out of you with one kick. I mean, Apocalypse yeah. Cow just, just, you know, pointed out that this person literally kicked you over. Yeah, a, an while entire holding a adult rifle. human. While holding a rifle. Like, their hands were busy. They couldn't swing their hands anywhere. It was just like a flat kick sent you head over ass, just on the ground. This is perverted. There should be no reason for any of this to work. 
No, it shouldn't. I mean, <laughs> I love the idea that you're doing what a scolded child does and just hides behind the box. I, yeah, I'm just 100%. Like, uh, you're just like, I'm not listening. You know, <laughs> you're like doing what a bad cat does where it just hides behind something after it does something. And you're like, hey, don't do that. And it runs off and just hides behind something. And you're like, fuck. Depp, I bet that box. I bet the box would work on them. I bet it would. I think I think it would. Just no, just look, just do a little bit of do a little bit of box foo, right? A little bit, a little bit of box foo. Don't worry about it. All right. Okay, his stuff so you're just going to sit here after having dusted a bunch of their people. They're like, he went back here. We saw him. There's no way out. Do you want to check the lockers? No, <laughs> let's leave immediately. Yeah, they didn't, let's they leave didn't immediately. check the lockers either, which is always fun. Oh, they didn't know what to do, man. They were just confused. Well, would you? Upset. I mean, that, no, that I mean, is literally just baffle them with bullshit, the strategy. I love how they're just NASCARing around your position where you are because they're trying to find you. Yes. And you're just like, I am one of the locker people. And howdy, folks. Hello, everyone. I may have to switch controllers because this is. Uh oh. Seems to be Here comes nice somebody. Now. Yeah. Here comes. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, dear. Oh, oh dear. What are oh. you doing? Yeah. What do you think? What do you what do you bet you could grab him? Add to the strangle pile. Oh no, he made it to safety. Ah, he made it to safety. He ain't gonna get added to the strangle pile, not today. Oh, he's coming back. This is it. Oh, he's coming back for us strangling. Oh, oh didn't him, even him, look. Him, didn't him. even look. Didn't even look. Didn't even need to. Oh. Give him a choke. There we go. Drag him to the victim pile. See, now you got a new friend. All you had to do is make him sleep sleep. And look, you found bullets. Now make him nap nap. There we go. Okay, next friend. Let's go find some. Oh. God, the attack team's still fleeing. All right. Hypothetical oh. Oh, question. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Survival question. Yeah. Let's say that we get into a total war scenario and you're in charge of military ration procurement control. And they say you can control, you can choose two things <laughs> that every ration can will have in them as ingredients. <laughs> and only those two things. And all foodstuffs must be made from those ingredients. What are the two ingredients you choose? Uh, every, so two ingredients. Well, I'm going to go with beans and ham. You're going to go with beans and ham? For everything, yes. Everyone likes beans and ham. I am going to have to do my cursed MRE because that would be the two ingredients. What, what, what? It's it's olive no. oil and then a seasoning packet for the oil. Ugh. It is the densest you can get calories to uh, <laughs> olive space olive taken oil. Up in weight. No, just olive oil is the first component <laughs> in your cursed ration because it's the most nutritionally dense thing. It's per the weight. most caloric dense. It's not nutritional at all. All right, sorry, I'm not a nutritionist. I'm just it's, so you have a tube of olive oil. All right, what's the other component? Oh, it'd be like one of the cheese packets that are like Kraft mac and cheese, but different flavors. <laughs> All right, so chat, which would you rather have as a military ration for an enduring World War Three? Would you rather have ham and beans? Which, even if you don't like ham, you can just eat the beans and make do because it's World War Three. Or you can have <laughs> olive oil and cheese packet. Your choice. Your choice. Let's let you choose and see which, which is for you. <laughs> well, no, I, I don't think that's quite fair. 
<laughs> the second, the first response that's all cap is oil and cheese. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. I... <laughs> one of each. Can I just eat the enemy? Yeah, exactly. Uh, like, I mean, you know, I... Well, Zingbop, Zingbop suggests... I mean, just imagine how many canteens you can fill with olive oil and cheese packets. Convenience <laughs> has its own value. No, yeah. I... So, I had a uh. very, uh... Very serious... Uh ultralight hiking phase in which I did the Appalachian Trail. And this is doing it on my other controller, so it may not be the controller, it may be the cord. Interesting. I'm I'm just horrified at the idea <laughs> of just you like can't, being you in can't the field. Get off the... Okay, here's how I know the military would ration this out. Imagine you're playing Twilight 2000. Like, write a Twilight 2000 campaign. Write a Twilight 2000 campaign. Except we have to play with the fucked up doctrines and ideas. We've done a war game, Red Dragon, and whatever what ifs. And then make the players play through it. And so it's like, oh, you're reaching your ration. And, and in your ration is like a canteen with a ripcord to unseal it. And inside that is olive oil. And so your guy's just like chugging hot olive oil in the post-apocalyptic. Well, it would be cold unless you, you know... Eat it. <laughs> uh. No, so yeah, I went through an ultralight hiking phase, and one of the things that I did eat a lot of uh, is the uh, cheap, usually off brand, so it's like an Aldi or something, uh, yeah. mac and cheese boxes, but instead of butter, you use olive oil because it's more calorically dense and it still tastes okay. It's not great. Um,. So between that and like fucking granola bars, that was that was how I made the Appalachian Trail. <laughs> uh, all right. So I was thinking of how could you make a ration? How could you make a ration that was just so fucking bonkers? Here, let me grab that... another cord and see if that fixes this issue. Keep going. I'm listening. No, no, sure. I, I was thinking of like what what kind of ration could you make that was complete fucking bonkers? Like okay. If you look at a, uh, a granola bar, a granola bar is like a small bowl of oatmeal, right? Yeah. That's just been compressed with sugar and glue and fat into a rectangle. Yeah. And when you when you look at it that way, you wonder what would happen if you took even more material and used even more pressure to con to compact it into a more concreted form. So uh, what, you know, you know, you could say like, for example, a granola bar might contain like two or three handfuls of, of oats and cereal and nuts and grains and berries, right? Yeah. Compressed into like a log. So what if you could take like a bushel of each of those and compress it into the same shape by using like really good hydraulics, like the kind you use to press out gun barrels? <laughs> So, I mean, that's just my that's just my thought. Is is what if you can press out, you know, uh, a whole meal to fit into something the size of a Jolly Rancher? What if you could make real Limbus bread, hydraulically speaking? <laughs> yeah, this is there's something fucky going on. Look, look, <laughs> chat's already pointing out text. This sounds like loafing, like talking about the goon station. Uh, oh, yes. Thing. Yeah, yeah. So we, we used to do a lot of loafing, and then they moved the loafing machine to a place that doesn't, isn't always have pressure. And so they made it hard. But if you go hard in loafing, I'm telling you, like back in the day, shit, it, <laughs> you would have guys making like cork and muon uh, loaves. Uh, well, Deputy, have you have you ever seen somebody play with a loafer like at full tilt? No. Okay, so here's how it works. The loafer is the prison loafer where you make prison loaf. You put things in, and the things you put in have value. And then it makes a loaf that contains the sum of those things. Yeah. However, okay. if you plumb it right, you can rate recursive loaves and keep doing it, and it keeps going around until you get to, like, cork and muon loaves and all these other things to where they become so dense that you can pick them up and, like, 
touch a wall panel and it disappears. Okay. So it starts to have like delta green qualities to it. And then when it gets really, really powerful, it starts to bounce around our reality and station, just annihilating anything it touches like antimatter. It's, yeah. it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. So loafing used to be great because you can hear people doing it. You hear the machine running when people do it and they go, you'll hear like, what are you doing? Uh, and, and they'll say, are you loafing back there? And all you hear is, is people in the background with a machine going clunk, 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 and the thing going around and 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 around. And, People know the doom of the station is approaching, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because every successive loafing that you don't hear people die in that back room, <laughs> every successive loafing you hear where like you hear people moving around and continuing to do stuff, every successive loafing you hear, every cycle of that, you know the doom of the station is just going to be that much worse when it finally slips out of their control. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what if what if you could combine a lot of different meals into a into a bar? I'm just saying theoretically. <laughs> he got one again. Yeah, that one you mangled. Now you're just gonna sit there in your box and slowly kill people with a box. Yep. There's a box moving around on the camera. Chuck it out. I think there's actually a line to that. Oh god. You know what you know what'd be really funny is is uh <laughs> alright, there's a good one. Adam B ten twenty nine says steak and potatoes bar. <laughs> so I have had this uh super nutrient dense Norwegian flatbread that's made of like meat, seeds and nuts and shit. It was supposed oh, to be, you know, pretty good. Uh, I, it, it yeah, I've, I've heard of that. It's it's uh, it's dense. Yeah, thick. <laughs> now, yeah, there we go. Okay. I was pretty sure you could do this. It's how you sneak around. In a classified facility. Yes, no, actually, it will deliver me somewhere else, depending on which box I've got. Oh. oh I used the wrong box. This is the same place. No, no, no. Okay, no, I, I want to leave. Let me off this ride. No, no, welcome to the ride. <laughs> welcome to the ride. This is what our, <laughs> this is what our people feel. Welcome to the ride. No, I went off. Oh, that, that wasn't suspicious at all, Raiden. Thank you. Oh, man. <laughs> Stag chili bar. <laughs> yeah. Take No, compress. It says contains four cans of stag chili in every bar. In every bar. In every bar. Four God. cans of stag chili, compressed beans, meats, and cumin. I need to figure out where the fuck I'm supposed to go next. Get out of shell one. According oh, <laughs> get shell out of two. shell one. Yeah, okay. I'm, get I'm out of shell one. Bridge, yeah. Okay. What if he just no, started speaking? Stop calling him, please. How does he know? <laughs> An excellent question. Can right. I say something? Can I say something catty and slightly unkind? If yeah, Shabu yeah, yeah. Allow me? Just slightly unkind. Which of these boxes gets me to strut D? Uh, electric? One of them. Let's so see where this one takes me. I was watching the new Obi-Wan show, right? I was watching the new Obi-Wan show. Like you do. Well, you know, the Mandalorian was good. Yeah. Uh, and, Boba and, Fett and, or Boba Fett was... Yeah, Bo Boba Fett was good. Don't talk shit. It was good. It, it wasn't perfect, you know, but it was good. 
Let me on! The box is running in place, Raiden. Um, but no, it like Boba Fett wasn't perfect, but it was good. And I thought these are both two really interesting shows. And I, I, I hope that, you know, they continue to make good, interesting shows. So I watched the Obi-Wan one. Yeah. And there's parts where I'm like, this is hilarious. <laughs> and so, like, I'm just sitting there laughing, talking about it. But they have a... Uh, Oh no! Okay, Allo had something that we'll have to discuss. But so I'm watching, I'm watching the Obi Wan show, and they have some flashbacks where they're like, "Ah, oh, yes, this is back before the fall when like Hayden Christensen's Anakin and younger Obi Wan are sparring, and it, yeah. it's jarring because like oh, Ewan McGregor looks a little older. He does, you know, but that's oh, okay because his character is supposed I to be. To be. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, we're back in the murder room. Yes, we are back in the murder room. Why did we do this? But no, I was saying he, Hayden Christensen is like noticeably older. Yeah. And, and I, I don't know what it is because I, I think it, I, and I'm not blaming him for aging at all because I, I aged like <laughs> How milk, dare you, like, motherfucker? Being yeah, older no, I than aged, you were 25 no. years ago? Right, like I'm, I'm way, way, way the worst person to say that. I've aged like milk. I look like a human fucking cigarette. What I, what I'm saying is that, like, that they didn't do makeup to help him was like horrifying because he, he just looks like burnout Jedi. I was like, wow, you look a lot more dark sided, and I realized just a little bit more age would have done that to anybody. Yeah. You know, like a few more years at L.A. made him look dark sided, and I was like, fuck, man, that's gruesome. That um, very horrific. <laughs> Yeah, so Allo says, uh, uh, Tex, I watched seasons three and four of Discovery while I was sick last week. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to say this, though. I really enjoyed, um, I'm really enjoying so far The Strange New Worlds. That feels like a lot what Trek has been missing. I've been enjoying that very much so far. Awesome. There's a few things, well, there's a few things uh, that I think they could have done better, but I, I think it's just, like writing styles of then versus now maybe. Yeah. And and that's that's personal largely, you know. All right. Um, so uh But yeah, it's it's like I realized a few years at LA made Hayden Christensen look a lot more like a Sith. Uh because in that flashbacks it's like, God man, he aged, but then I thought on it and it's like, wait, no. I'm just reading this as like that's him turning to the dark side. It does that to you, <laughs> you know? And I was like, fuck man, LA's the dark side. <laughs> Because <laughs> yeah, that, that man, I mean, he was he was a fairly normal looking dude, but I mean, it, it, it sifted him out a bit, and I'm yeah. like, wow. So uh, we got we got a problem. What do you mean? The controller is completely stopped responding, as has the game. Uh -huh. Oh well, mm. that's fine. And uh, we can go over to manager. It. Oh, and task manager. So don't worry. Um, this is our best stream. Uh, we're very prepared and very good at Metal Gear, as you can tell. Uh, yeah, the, the emulator appears to uh, be trying to uh, use unlimited cycles. So I, I may have to reboot everything to get this going. Okay, Or I, I we understand. continue to sit in the box and talk for an hour and a half of chat. Well, I mean, you know, maybe we can call this the box episode. Um, you know, this is this is just the the hazards of of the box life. You know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I guess welcome to the box cast. We're on the box cast. Yes. Yeah. All right. So yeah, this is now a podcast. This is. Uh, Diggs is gonna get mad. I've turned yet something else into the, uh, the BPL podcast. podcast. Yeah, but all right. So you know now now that we've got this, hold on. Uh, hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Black Pants Legion podcast. And by the train toot of the horn, you know that we are here in the box. This is the box cast. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and take some questions from our viewers and let's see how many people ask me uh, what is a griffin in different words. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. See, we're just luring people in to yeah, wondering yeah, yeah, about yeah. You know. This is very deep cover infiltration. They they don't suspect a thing. 
you know, yeah, the, the podcasts are so 2021. Yeah, it, uh, the new, it, yeah. I can't even get my cursor to move. It is completely locked up. Don't worry about it. Don't, just, <laughs> just, just, don't worry about it. Don't don't you worry about it. What's your favorite proto mech? Uh, we'll start off strong. I don't like it. I don't like proto mechs. I think they're dumb. How many griffins can <laughs> I fit in the box? Depends on scale. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, you're talking what? Like the two centimeter tall Games Workshop yeah. ones? That's probably a 1500 griffin box. It could be, but here's a good question. The Night Owl asks, what's Depp's perfect sandwich? Ooh, my perfect sandwich. Now, are we are we talking your classic, you know, two slices of white bread kind of thing? Or like free form, you know, restaurant kind of thing? <laughs> what do you mean free form? Like, it does like it, does long it grilled it cheese. Contain. Is that still a sandwich? Long grilled cheese. <laughs> <sighs> I think I think that if chat recognizes it as a sandwich, you can say that's a sandwich. But it's favorite sandwich, not like most fucked up sandwich. That's not the calculus. Welcome to the box cast, ladies. It, why is the chat me more interactive now and <laughs> loving this and the numbers are going up now that we're trapped in a box and nothing's... You know what? Fuck it. I'm all right, shit sandwich, and... go. No, we're, we're all trapped in a box. We're all trapped in a box, Deputy. The box cast. All right, go ahead. Uh, Black Forest ham. I'm all over a nice, well done Black Forest ham. Got some Swiss cheese on there. Uh, I also make a really, really mean Reuben. All right. I mean, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you on that. I mean, I I think the perfect sandwich is is a lot of different things. Uh, it's 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 a lot of different things. It's it's a lot of fine that sounds awful details. Tomato. Well, I'm sitting here oil and cheese sandwich. Jesus Christ! It's my <laughs> dip in a box. That's great, Ello. Uh, did I not pay attention to the pizza stream? I. Uh. All right, the man in the box is the theme song. Uh, all right, I'm reading the Nebre compressed food. All right, nutrient do a bar idea. Surstroming flatbread sausages in a can of Fiesta Pale. I don't think you'd be able to taste it. Um, favorite sandwich, roast beef, cheddar with lettuce, tomato soup, and a Dr. Pepper. No, I've tried is... two different uh, DS4 controllers, and now the computer's completely locked up. I can't even get my cursor to move. Hence, Adam. it's the box cast. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the <laughs> which box is why I'm in a now. box in the corner. You know, we're getting a hype train now that the box cast has started. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, oh, good lord. I I just this is accidental success I guess Rocky um, Mountain Oyster Bar uh, nutritious yeah I mean no guard will never come over those. here no 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 yeah no. Raiden has been condemned to eternal box I remember when uh, they did that on Goon Station they had a punishment box that was horrible because <laughs> it had like ten thousand of those horrible ski free Yetis in it like all on one cube and all they could do is constantly scream <laughs> all they could do is constantly scream so you're putting that thing and all you would see in chat is ah, rah, rah, and you couldn't say or do anything and the admin put someone in there and i'm like oh my god there's a million of these things and it sounds fucking horrible and he's like don't worry i'll try to get rid of them so he starts spawning bombs to try to kill them so you the server starts lagging as you hear hundreds and hundreds of carpet bombs going off in this tiny box <laughs> that is that's that just screaming of yetis so it's like it just sounds like Dian bin fu in a box <laughs> and it's and you're like thank you gun station We got a hype train thanks to the box. Yeah. Hype box. Uh, uh, Stormwave. I'm a night shift cop, so I tend to watch a lot of sunrises myself. But I'm also not much of a morning person, so that's the only way I would ever really see them. Well, you know, I'm going to say this. Mornings are very overrated. Night's where it's at. You can get a lot more done at night. Also, you don't have to be around people. And that's pretty good. Whoa! A lot of... People who are giving stuff, welcome to the box cast. Yeah, uh, thanks, Night thank Owl. You. Wow, thank you, Night Owl, for just throwing that stuff around like crazy. 
Oh, man. So, you know, we were talking about some other stuff for Monday nights because this has been um, off and on again interesting. You know, yeah. uh, I'm sure I'm sure we'll be able to get it working again just fine. But emulators can be emulators. One of the things uh, where, oh, someone asked, what is the airspeed of an unladen swallow? Uh, European or African swallow? That's the question. Um, but we were thinking about doing cold arms. Uh, Depp and I were doing, thinking of doing cold arms or uh, uh, Gates of Hell, which is uh, World War II and making a fictional World War II unit and letting you guys follow along in a very fucked up Band of Brothers style thing with that. Um, and watching us play through a very strange fictional history where, you know, bicycle troops rule the land. Yes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we've, we've thought about different things we could do on Monday nights. Uh, however, we have planned out the next theme park, uh, Mega World, which is probably going to take several episodes to beat. It's, it's going to be the biggest perk I can build in the engine. And I'm, I'm going to build that out. So I think that'll be kind of fun. We're doing Disney World. Well, my, my idea is to do, I was going to lay out a park where it's like the giant clawed out center of Disney World, like the giant industrial footprint that clawed mm -hmm. out of the earth with just the outside wall built, but it's like they ran out of money. And so they go, oh, we're down to the last 75 grand. You know what I mean? So it's a giant empty hole in the ground with a wall around it. Like, oh, it's the magic kingdom. But then they ran out of money. So like Depp and I will have to do it over a series of things to try to actually make it into Disneyland. But we'll be doing it like ghetto Disneyland. Like it doesn't have the money yet. All they did was buy the lot and they can't finish it. So we'll be like in the corner trying to nickel and dime people and turn a carnival into Disneyland. <laughs> We, I've, I've got, I've got ideas because we could, I think, build it as a, uh, you know, spokes on a wheel design, like a modern prison. <laughs> <laughs> that is horrible. Uh, oh my God. Uh, isn't it though? Ugh. Yeah, that's nuts. Yeah, so some, someone asked, uh, Marco asked, what are your guys' thoughts on World War II war prizes being taken during the U.S. occupation of Japan? Am, am I the only one who gets upset seeing 500-year-old katanas being pawned on Pawn Stars by a yokel? No, in fact, uh, the Japanese Sword Commission is, in fact, similarly upset on a professional level. Yeah, um, yeah they, they will try to get those back. Um, mm -hmm. a, a lot of stuff was was grabbed, and, and some of it at gunpoint. So that was kind of the problem. But, Owl, thank you for the support. That's been fucking crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, Cedar Point, are... Ohio. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've... Yeah, no, uh, Sandro saying, yeah, Cedar Point in Ohio. Um, Mike was talking about <laughs> many of the interesting parks out in, uh, out in Ohio, and they have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful history, like just a mad, mad history. Yeah, I don't know. I've never been. Um, just kind of skipped over that part of the nation, despite being in a flyover state myself. When I go east, it's usually far enough east I just fly, unfortunately. No, that's fair. It's it's hard driving across the country anymore. I used to like driving. The problem is, is everyone's a fucking dick on the highway. Because mm -hmm. I, I used to like driving and then like putting cruise control on and doing a consistent number of miles an hour. Like, you know, more than more than 75, maybe 76 or 77. Maybe 78, but under 79 miles an hour. Yeah. Because I know that's when you fuckers with your radar guns suddenly get opinionated on what's <laughs> speeding. So I've learned to play it safe and keep the tires and everything calibrated as it should be. And so I'm sitting there driving along, but anymore you drive down the road and you get near a city and it's just like parking lot and you just start yelling at people. It's like, uh, yeah. I remember um, I once took an Amtrak train. Now that this is the box cast and everything's broken. Um, but <laughs> I'm going to have to end the stream to fix it. So, yeah, we might as well take advantage of it. We'll do this for another yeah. couple minutes. Yeah, why not? We'll, we'll, re we'll do an hour of box cast because we broke the fucking thing. Yeah, we'll, we'll go to the hour train. Mark. Hype train. That's so uh, sad. The hype train came when the game ended. 
<laughs> That's the BPL though. I mean, think about it. It's it's beautiful. It really it's it's funny, but it's beautiful. Like in in the Black Pants Legion, I I'm a guy who started off as like this F grade who gives a fuck space station 13 guy who dabbled in just recording long plays and shit. And then over time I've built a production team and the respect of a community to allow me to build like multi hour feature length documentaries that allow us to actually okay. enter into the AFI and BFI film competition just by default because of complexity, length and size of production. And we're like, Holy fuck, we did this. And the fact that, I'm allowed to have a podcast and the fact that I'm allowed to enjoy some modest success and some esteem from my peers and the fact that we can sit here and have a box cast and people can tune in and enjoy it because they enjoy us for us. I, I think that's a wonderful privilege and it's an accidental success, but I think that sums up the BPL very well. You have failed um, successfully. You have failed successfully. And and that is that is just what happens is you can successfully fail your application. I knew a <clears throat> sorry, I knew a guy because I'm fucking sinus trees are fucking, but I knew a guy yeah, who was out looking. Out here. Well, I, well, I knew a guy who was out and he was he was looking for like a wife not a girlfriend but a wife he wanted to settle down he was a dude in Oklahoma i knew and he he went to all the churches he went to all the church functions he went to all of his social circles he went to all the places to meet all the people and he just got tired of looking and one day he started bitching to a coworker who'd been through the same thing and then they got married <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> well the test failed successfully you got so mad you bitched to the right person and yep. they solved your problem. Task failed successfully. That does happen. Not often, but it does. No, no, but it does happen. It does. And task Adam, failed successfully. Yeah, I've got task manager up. It also is not responding. So. And yes, I I do care that Diggs defended the BPL. He he responded to a batch all. I said thank you, and I I appreciated it. It was it was very notable. However, I wish not to laud our victories because I don't want Dix to be assaulted by the next person who comes along and is like, I have studied and prepared. I choose you ten v ten on intruder one v one. You'd have to take in Steven. You'd have to just just grab him and tag him in. You know. Uh, Apocalypse be, Cow? That, yes, I think all of these guards canonically die at the end. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. Um, that may be true for all the games, because the genome soldiers all died from Fox Die. Oh, that's fair. That's right. Oh, and Volmata. Uh, yeah, we did a 1v1, not a mech battle over Waffle House, but we actually did Battle of Waffle Hut. Uh, that was an intruder episode. Uh, we, we actually did have a yes. huge gunfight over that Waffle House. God, I wish Intruder were a better game. I wish it had more depth than we could explore in 45 minutes of yelling. Yeah. Star Siege? I've not heard that name in a while. Star Siege Tribes, as I told Diggs, I mean, I congratulated him on his ability to fight because Star Siege is a game like Quake that has such a unique moveset that you are generally a master of one. Like, I've watched people play Star Siege competitively. I never had the skills for that. I don't have the hand-eye coordination or reaction time for shit like that. Now, I can APM my ass off. I can fight people 9v1 on Wargame Red Dragon, but when it comes time to, like, doing something like a first-person shooter movement, boom, shoot, control, I don't have it. Like, I'm always, like, seconds behind wherever the people are, and it's, it's like, embarrassing. But when it comes down to, like, Star Siege and people who have that movement, it's not about shooting so much. It's just about being in the right position to shoot at the right time, and it reminds me of, like, World War I planes dogfighting, where it's all position and speed. 
And it reminds me of like when you see people doing like quake fights with just rockets or whatever. There is a magical balance of where they jump, hop, and shoot that is perfect timing. And they just nail people right on with it where they will shoot somewhere to send someone flying to hit them again. And it's just that that certain positional awareness and knowledge of the engine in a shooter that speaks to just inherent knowledge. I cannot even approach shooters like that. You give me an RTS, I I will get very nasty. But if you give me a shooter, I, I will bumble around and you will hear just me face rolling the keyboard like a moron. Nothing here. Nothing here. Well, he's got to put his two cents in. Yeah. Uh, I, get in the jukebox yeah, at Waffle House. That is a good goal. That's fair. And, and yeah, yeah, Sturgill um, Simpson's pretty good. I very much I enjoyed liked, Sound and Fury. Sound and Fury was really enjoyable. It was a solid fucking album. Yeah. Um, it's it's rare to hear a really nice album. That's it's just, start to that's finish. Just that's solid one of the all, few yeah. that I will just listen through. It has a good solid sound. It reminds me of old Pink Floyd. Like if you yes. listen to a lot of Pink Floyd's older albums like Dark Side of the Moon... Every sound of every song is chosen to be in harmony with the rest. I know that sounds like total bullshit, but listen to the whole album in one sitting and you'll find it just molds one song into the next, into the next, into the next, into the next. And it's all very subtly elements of the same theme, facets of the same story. Yep. And you go, wow, that's a really good album. Not just a good song, but a good album. And so Sound and Fury kind of same up there for me and i'm not a music expert i just mean in my gut i feel it that way yeah well and i i started listening to it and then he announced that there was going to be the anime um animation i've not watched it metal stuff yeah it's yeah i love heavy metal well Well, i love i love heavy metal um I, i loved heavy metal and all of that stuff because it had a really unique art style and i loved 82,000 and stuff like that that had a really mm-hmm. beautiful art style as well very unique and so heavy metal kind 2000 of again, however was kind of crap that yeah that was not good um but <laughs> but i it's like when it comes down to rts's like sins of a solar empire when i was streaming big um, like regularly, like yeah. doing big long streams regularly. I don't mean to like big numbers, but just like bigger, longer, like big RTS stuff. Well, there was a time there, yeah, where you yeah. you stream for five or six hours at a go. I don't know how. You well, I love it. RTS, man. It's it's um. Well, big, yeah, I big, I can play an RTS yeah. for that long. I can't keep exactly. talking to myself for that long. I can just because I can talk RTS all day. I played enough of them, but like Sins of a Solar Empire, when I got bored with that stream, I hit like four buttons and beat it. And then uh, Colberto was like, "What the fuck?" And I just started <laughs> laughing because I hadn't built any ships to go fight anywhere. I, I just stayed in my thing and like built essentially a series of very large industries and just sat in the back like crop and just made money. And then when it came time to fight, I was like, "Oh yeah, my super weapons," and just used them instantly. Um, and I, I like asymmetrical RTS thinking, like I, I know that in God, for the longest time, if you wanted to beat somebody who was trying to kill you with a Zerg rush, all you had to do was last longer than 60 seconds. If you lasted longer than 60 seconds, they would quit to play another round so they could get another win because nine times out of 10 that worked nine Mm -hmm. times out of 10, it worked again and again and again and again and again and again and again. And so if you could stop them, they would quit. And that actually worked really well. Um, so if you learn little tricks like that, saying, I'm not having to beat this army, I'm only having to beat that player, then you realized what frustrates certain players' mindsets. And if they're used to playing 100 rounds or 100 games a day in order to get their numbers, and you frustrate them to where they can't play the rest of their games, they'll quit, <laughs> and you win. Um, thank you, Mr. Train. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, just reading through the other chat messages as we continue the, uh, box cast, uh, Sandro Ski says, small question on my end. And if you have answered it before, don't worry about it. Are there going to be new episodes of Spurs station 13 coming anytime soon? Um, yes, there, there will be. I took a little bit of a hiatus because, um, after the streamers had been playing space station 13, there are certain things where, you go back to your favorite place like uh, Goon Station and you'll be like, man, I'm going to fucking get back on Goon Station and have a good time. <clears throat> and 
you go on and for like 10, yeah, we need to train them with digs. But uh, you you play the same station 10, 20 times in a row just trying to get a good round in to record it. And for like nine of the 10 rounds, nobody even starts the engine and nobody even tries to. And, and you find nobody wants to play gimmicks. And so it's like a very sad spaceman walking around trying to get people to do stuff. Um, and you find like cargo doesn't like shenanigans anymore, a lot of other things. And so it's, it's kind of out of spot. The one of the last places I think that feels very old school space station 13 is probably VG station, um, which has the door fortress rounds and shit like that and gets really wild. That's where we did the laser limbo episode. Um, the other one that I really do enjoy routinely that is like the watering hole of all Space Station 13. Like everyone I know, EX8EV1 on down, everybody plays Colonial Marines. Everybody. <laughs> everybody, because it's a war movie. Everyone knows what they're going to get. They know the aliens are going to win about 70% of the time. And they know it's going to be about two hours of stupidity. And so everyone's having the, the same sort of stuff. But yeah, I, I just had to take try to step away for a while um, because I was just like, meh. And I, I, I have played and I have recorded, but the problem is, is I'll record for hours and hours and I have limited time, but I'll record for hours and hours and I'll get nothing that's even funny. Uh, you have people who generally don't do the yes and style of improv. They just stare at you. Uh, because that's not their story or not what they want to do. And you're like, okay, but then they don't do anything or don't talk because yeah. they're all like in a, in a discord call. And so just kind of <laughs> like talking yeah. to each other. And, and so like you'll walk into a department and there'll be like eight people sitting there, like not talking to each other. And, and you're like, Hey, what are you doing? And they just stare at you until an admin boink happens. And you're like, fuck. All right. Uh, Hey, we've just hail hydrate. Mark. Yeah. Hydrate time. If if you want to learn older Space Station 13, VG is pretty fun. Goon will teach you, but I would recommend the role play server. I heavily would recommend the role play server. Some people it's have been having very light yeah. on role play, but it's at least present. Yeah, and and the role play is there, but also they have a lot of mentors and people who will walk you through shit. Um, I would very heavily recommend as well. Uh, some people have said good stuff about Fulp Station recently. I've heard that a lot from Hat and other pulp folks and Pablo, and Colonial Marines as always. Um, but yeah, if if you're gonna do Goon Station, I would recommend the role play server. They're, the mentors are certainly a lot more present there, and you'll find a lot of people who have a lot of depth who know what they're doing there. At least for my um recommendations but yeah we should probably refix this thing and get this yep. thing fucking started so and we hope some of these right people back. show back up